Last time we learned how to build our decision trees. This time let's focus on impurity functions. Impurity is an important concept when it comes to building our decision trees. Because when we are deciding which question to ask at a node, we consider the impurity in the child nodes after asking that question. And we want this impurity to be as low as possible. In other words, we want to have some high purity child nodes. Let's use this simple example to explain this idea. Assume that I have these three buckets here one two three and i'm going to have some data points in them you can simply assume that these buckets are also our nodes in the decision tree in the first bucket i have four data points from class two zero from class one in this case this will have low impurity in the second one i have three to one and this will give me medium level impurity in the last one i have two from class one and two from class two in this case this will have some high level impurity when we are building our trees, we are not going to use these levels, but we need to calculate some numbers. For classification problems, we have these two common choices, entropy or Gini. Entropy is given like this. We have this negative summation of the probability times logarithm of this probability. In this case, this probability is the probability of having that data point from that class. We can simply, for example, give an example here. Let's say I have these two data points from class 1 and three data points from class 2 in this node. In this case, the probability for class 1 is 2 over 5, probability for class 2 is 3 over 5. Overall, we calculate this per class, then we sum it over all the classes. For Gini, this is again very similar. We use the probability times 1 minus probability this time. Overall, these are extremely similar measures. Sometimes we can prefer Gini because it runs faster because we don't calculate this logarithm. Let's take a look at this plot here. In this plot, I will show you the Gini and entropy scores for two classes, and we will look at the probability here. When we have this probability of 0.5 from one class, you see that both of these metrics have their peaks. On the other hand, if we are certain about our classes, we will have these zero impurities on this end and on this end. Let's also use a numerical example here. Assume that we have a certain condition here. This can be, for example, x1 less than or equal to 5 or whatever condition we have. And we will calculate the Gini score after this split. This is my yes subset and this is my no subset. And let's calculate these Gini scores. For the yes subset, I will just plug in my numbers. My probability of having this class one data points is 0 0.55 because that's the distribution there. Times one minus that plus probability of having the second class is 0 0.45 times one minus that. Overall, this gives me 0 0.495. For the second node, let's do this again. The probability of having class one is zero because I have none here times one minus plus one times one minus that. Overall, this will give me zero impurity. Again, this is not a surprise because we already know that if we are certain about the distribution here, it's just going to give us zero. Overall, when we want to calculate the Gini scores in the, in the child nodes, we will get some weighted sum. And this weighted sum will include the weights uh, proportional to the number of data points we have in these nodes. For example, if I uh, if I have more data points on this, that will have a higher weight, and overall, we will have this single score at the end. Let's also talk about the impurities for regression problems. In regression problems, we will have numerical values, and the most common measure is this variance. Here we are using the mean value, and then we calculate this variance term. Similarly, we can use the mean absolute error. In this case, we will just use this mean absolute error equation here. And we can calculate these impurities for each of the node in the tree. Here's a quick note. Differentiability is not important here because we are not doing mathematical optimization. So you can change these uh, impurity functions to however you like, to whatever you like. OK, it's nice. We learned how to calculate these impurities. So let's talk about one more concept, information gain. Information gain is important because when we are selecting our split conditions, we can use information gain. 
And this is actually a really simple concept once we know how to calculate our impurities. This is the difference between the impurity of the parent node and the weighted sum of the impurities of the child nodes. So we can calculate the impurity in the parent node, then we get the weighted sum of the impurities of the child nodes, and the difference is the information gain. And the lower the impurity of the child nodes, the larger the information gain will be. Overall, we want to select the splits that will give us some high information gain. For example, when we are considering all the split conditions, we can look at their information gains and we can select the split condition that will give us the highest information gain out of those. Overall, this is how we can build our tree. Let's talk about one last thing. Here we will talk about actually some mathematical similarities between our regression metric and a classification metric. Here with the regression metrics, we saw that we can use the variance as one of the metrics. And for the classification ones, we saw that we can use Gini. Here I want to talk about a mathematical coincidence, actually. This is something interesting. Let's assume in this problem we have two classes, 0 or 1. And we can write the mean value like this, 1 over n. There is this summation, then this label, whatever we have. We can also call this as a probability, because we can easily calculate the probability like that. And that can be the probability 1 here, p1. Then we will write our impurity for the variance. Then let's open this square here, and that will give us this one here. As we are only dealing with two classes here and zero ones, our labels, this time I don't need this square. It can just go to this y itself because they are just zero one. When you take the square, they are the same numbers. And if we take a look at this second term here, we can also apply this summation on it. Then we can have this 1 over n in the beginning. Overall, when we do that, this is a constant value, so it will just go out. Same as this minus 2, so that will also go out. And we will have this term here. And we already know this because we have that here. When we carry out these calculations, we see that this is minus 2 times our mean squared value. So it's nice. Similarly, we can use the same idea here. This is a constant, so when you take the summation and when you take 1 over n, out of that it won't make any difference, so that will just go out as it is. When you take the difference, it will be this negative term here. Overall, when I apply the summation on this term here, I already know the answer from here. So let's plug it in back here. And overall, this gives me two terms here. And again, applying all this knowledge from this part, I can plug in my probabilities. And overall, again, you can see that this is equal to our Gini index. So what we proved here is that these are some similar metrics, and we can make some mathematical derivations and reach out uh, to these similar conclusions.